Hey guys, Spider-Man Far From Home is out now in theaters and there's a lot of questions and a lot of buzz on the internet about how good the movie is and I'm gonna have the answers. Hey guys, Pablo with b and and now we're gonna be talking about Spider-Man Far From Home. Is that a good movie? Is that a bad movie? Is that the type of Marvel movie we've been waiting for? Why is this guy holding his microphone? I'll try to answer all those questions to you. So let's address the white elephant in the room. So I do have to hold my microphone today because I'm still working on a Q6 in this room. So, so your ears do not bleed. I mean, they will because of my accent, but besides that, I, I'd rather be holding the microphone and looking a little bit goofier than the usual, but at least give you a slightly better sound. And I'll try to give you no spoilers, besides the things you already know. So first of all, let's talk about expectations when going to watch that movie. I know there has been a lot of buzz on the internet about some um, spoilers that came out, some stuff like that. Well. Let me just assure you that whatever was said in some file and some post that someone put that they had inside the information, it's not true. So don't worry about that. And another issue that a lot of reviewers have been talking about Spider-Man Far From Home is that the first and second act are too much of a coming of age movie. Well, yeah, you can see like that, but let me just explain one thing. Um, I watched an interview with Stanley and I'll actually post part of this interview for you guys to see. So the big difference between DC comic superheroes and Marvel superheroes is that Stanley always intended his heroes to be regular people in the inside. Uh, they had to struggle with jobs. They had to, they had to deal with regular problems so we could actually relate to them. And that's the thing about Spider-Man. That's who Spider-Man was. If you actually know the source material, you know, he was a goofy kid. He was loved by his aunt and uncle. He had lost his parents. They gave him as much as they could to have a decent life, but they're not rich people. What they gave him the most was always love, but he struggled with, you know, just having regular clothes when all the kids growing up with him had better things than he did. So when he got his powers, first thing he did was wrestling and made some money with that and that become famous. And he didn't care about crime fighting until something really bad happened to him. And that's the thing. After that, he became someone that he didn't care about making money in, in general. I mean, besides for living, he could have worked with the Avengers and get a paycheck just by being a hero. And he chose actually to, you know, be the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and helping people without being paid to do that. So when we understand that about the character and remember that's Peter Parker when he's 16 and Spider-Man was never just Spider-Man. Spider-Man was Peter Parker. Sp Spider-Man was his persona. And we forget that. Everybody thinks that, you know, um, Tony Stark is Iron Man's persona. No, Iron Man is Tony Stark's persona. That's the suit he dress when he goes fight crime, not the other way around. So, yes, is there a coming of age kind of movie? Sure. But in my opinion, that's how Stanley used to portray Spider-Man. Spider-Man in a lot of the old comics, you would see more about Peter Parker than you would actually see of Spider-Man, the stories, because that's who he is. And that's why I believe that's Spider-Man Far From Home is the movie that Stanley would have wanted because you got to imagine he's a 16 year old kid from Queens. I'm from Queens. So I, I do understand a little bit. He, he just wants to be a kid and now he was given those great powers and 
he's trying to use to better people. But what does he want to do? He wants to fight little burglars. He wants to help the people in Queens, the people in New York City. He never intended to be that great superhero. But now, Iron Man's gone. And someone that he saw as a father figure, after he had lost Uncle Ben, who was his other father figure. So it's a kid who is lost, and he wants love, like everybody does. And he can't have because he got too much responsibility. Responsibility that for a 16-year-old is almost unfair. But when everybody looks up to you, you got to do it. You don't have to want. People need you, and a hero will step up and do what is necessary. So you have this. He doesn't want. And everybody knows how close Spider-Man was to Iron Man. So everybody's looking at him like, you're going to be kind of the new Iron Man. And I'm not saying wear the suit, but kind of be that person that will give your life to everybody. I'm not saying Spider-Man doesn't do, but again, 16-year-old kid. And he has conflicts with that. And, and that's what the movie is. It's, it's showing Peter Parker growing from being a 16-year-old that had to fight Thanos, that had to try to save the world in multiple occasions, into the hero he got to become. And it's hard. Imagine this. It's like you make a kid president. Yes, he's going to think it's exciting, but the moment you have to put some really hard decisions on him, that's going to weight him down. So that's why I believe that's one of the greatest Marvel Universe movies, because it really shows who Peter Parker is. And you know what? I Part of the Marvel Universe movies have been forgetting about that. And, and mostly because a lot of people that go to watch those movies, they really don't have a background with the comics. So when they go to watch any of those Marvel movies, they expect like 10, 15 minutes of character development. But mostly the development is added to a fight scene or something like that. They wanted action. I mean, most of those movies are really open with huge action scenes. So for people that really don't have much knowledge on the comics, that's just fine. That's what they went to see. But this movie, they really try to show the other side, the, si the human side of Peter Parker. And I think that's why that's a great movie. And the, mo and the reason why I'm rehearsing on that issue is don't go watch the movie expecting that the opening going to be a huge fight scene or action scene because it's really more about Peter Parker as Peter Parker and not as Spider-Man. And no, I'm not saying there's not a lot of action scenes. Actually, the action scenes are amazing, but they're not most of the movie. And I think that's really like the 80s, 90s Spider-Man comics for me. And that's why I really love the movie. Mysterio, also another thing that had been a lot of buzz on the internet. So one of the biggest arguments about Mysterio is uh, people were arguing that if you know the source material, you probably wouldn't like the character too much. Well, there has been a lot of changes on the characters uh, when you go to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What is fine? And to be honest with you, um, his changes on the character, they're not as bad. I actually think they're really well made, was really well planned. You guys going to see a lot of people working with him that they had been showing since the first Iron Man. So that, that was a really good buildup. Um, there's some difference on the Mysterio from the comics, but I feel like the main part, the main villain, the whole thing of how it's built, it's pretty close to source material. I think that's a great adaptation. I, I really didn't feel was a disservice to the character, like some people may be thinking. I, th I think he was perfect because the essence of the character was maintained. It's just like me arguing about Nick Fury being black because I grew up with a white Nick Fury that 
had fought, I believe, in Vietnam and stuff. So, you know, I but I, I, I like Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. I think he's a great character. Okay? So, for me not to give spoilers, I will pretty much stop the video right now. I will make a spoiler video probably in a couple of days, so... More, most people already watched the movie, so it's fine. I, I don't want to destroy to anybody, but do go to watch the movie. It's an amazing movie. I think that's going to really, really speak to a lot of people. Um, people saying about some jokes don't land. You know what? Imagine when you're 16 years old in love and making jokes. A lot of them are going to suck. Okay? So just go with that. Just have fun. Great movie. Enjoy. That's the end of Phase 4, and I do think it makes sense to be the end of Phase 4 instead of just build up for a whole new Phase 5. And yeah, great movie. And now I'm going to play Stan Lee's interview so you guys understand why I love that movie so much. To me, the human aspect of superheroes has always been perhaps the most important part. By that I mean, okay, we assume your superhero might be extra strong or might be able to fly or run as fast as a comet. But unless you care about the superhero's personal life, you're just reading a shallow story. Just because a person has a superpower doesn't mean he might not have the same personal problems that you or I might have. Maybe he doesn't have enough money. Maybe he has a family problem. Maybe the girl he loves doesn't love him. Or maybe the girl he loves doesn't want to be involved with a superhero. There are so many things you can think of that round out the character and the personality so the superhero isn't just one or two-dimensional. You want a three-dimensional superhero who lives and breathes and worries and experiences things just the way you and I do, except for the fact that he or she has a superpower. Uh, we'll be seeing you guys more to the end of the week. I hope you guys have a great week, a great work week, a great week week, a great everything. Have a great life. And don't forget to subscribe, leave a comments below. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again.